You're now listening to the Garage Guys Fantasy Sports Podcast. Welcome to episode 171 of the Garage Guys Fantasy Sports Podcast. It's Monday, June 15th. Typically, we would have done this on a Sunday night, but it didn't happen. Drew, how are you? Could be better. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to come up here all positive. I think this was probably our worst race of the uh, season, so I'm not going to even sugarcoat it and go ahead and tell you it could be a better Monday for me and you. I'm gonna tell you this much, man. It is uh, it's been a long time since uh, since the Beats came to town, and uh, yeah. <laughs> what you eating there? I got some Reese's cups. I got you know two liters Sierra Mist, the shittiest form of lemon lime soda known to man. And um, I, I haven't seen that in forever. Onions. Yeah, I didn't even know they still made this stuff. You're like a junior high uh, kid going to like snack break. Yeah, that's kind of how it feels this morning. It's pretty pretty rough. It yeah. was sad times. The only thing now that I'm missing is uh is my uh the used albums where I can sit and cry and be an emo boy. But uh but yeah, we're that. uh <laughs> it is Dega week though. It is it is so that's the one thing that we had to look forward to. But uh, Garage Guys Fantasy Sports is brought to you by Drip Drop. Not Sierra Mist, not Funyuns, and not Reese's. Drop. It's brought to you by Drip Drop, okay? And Drip Drop RS was invented to treat dehydration in the most challenging circumstances. One may say that Drew and I are going through some challenging circumstances after the race in Miami. But you know what? We got Drip Drop to bring us back up, keep us afloat. It's used by doctors. It's used by military members. It's used by athletes. It's used by literally – all the garage guys, everybody in the circles, the garage fam, they know what's up. And you can use it too. If you're a first time listener, just stumbled upon this, you're like, what the hell is drip drop? Go to dripdrop.com. Use promo code garage guys 20 and you'll save 20% at checkout. Try it. You won't regret it. Best hydration in town. Hands down. Drip drop. Do the drip. Do the drippy. Do the drop. So yeah. Um, it's no surprise Dude, and, and this, is how it, this is how it goes. Let's just go right into the Dixie Vodka 400, uh, just kind of recapping it. Yesterday was an amazing day. Got up. Drew's, you know, Drew's in town. I'm like, hey, all right. We get to chill, get to watch some racing. And um, link up, building lineups, feeling on top of the world. On top of the world. Just get, and, and that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Mm-hmm. And – um. And then we just we, – we got into the race, and then just the unexpected happened. And, uh, and that's how these things go. There's the ups and the downs. But this one, uh, it was wild. Denny Hamlin, I did not predict to dominate that race that way. Um, we have not seen that type of performance, I feel like, uh, this season from Denny, that dominant behavior. You know, we, you know, we saw that at Martin Truex at Martinsville, but – um, and at Homestead as well, this, I mean, look, I could sit here and make millions of excuses, you know, uh, this is the first race that we had here. That wasn't a championship race. First time they raced here in the summertime. There's all kinds of things you can say. Bottom line is, is that we didn't expect Blaney and Hamlin to do these things. I mean, where were you? Where were you at, like, early early in the week? I, I cringed. I'll say this much. I cringed early in the week from saying, I have a feeling Denny Hamlin's going to win this race. And then I was like, but if he gets the pole, then I'm probably going to sit back. So I've, I've had time to process all that stuff. It's behind us now. But still got to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, for me, with Hamlin, exactly what I thought would happen actually did happen early in the race, which was he lost the, he lost the lead early. Right. The part that we, <laughs> that we could not have predicted is that he would get back up there on several, several occasions. Him and Blaney were, I feel like changing for the lead. Um, I just, 
I just don't know what happened to the speed with like guys like Harvick and Truex and Bush. I think they got up as high as sixth, but never could crack the top five. And none of the guys we were heavy on really could ever could do anything about it. We, we nailed the value picks and we nailed the mid tier picks. None of that really matters if you don't have the guys that lead the laps and get those fastest laps. I think, I mean, those scores are massive for Blaney and Hamlin. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, that's the thing that sucks the most is, like, when – because typically most people in there, you know, most, most people in our situation and they're trying to help other people learn DFS and play DFS and, you know, doing content writing, we typically get the big guys right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, all, it's almost like a week-in, week-out thing. Like, you know, we got this big guy we're on. Dude, big dog, that, that's the way. And it's, it's usually the mid-tier and low-tier guys. But, dude, we were – Spot on, dude. Tyler Reddick, William Byron, Arik Amarola, Arik. I say that Arik. because it's, that's how it looks like. Yeah, Amarola by morning. I love that. That's yeah, stuck in my head now. Do it. <laughs> but, you know, it was Future amazing. Content. Yeah, yeah, for sure. When, whenever you're back in town. <laughs> I'm bouncing everywhere. I've had, like, a different background. Every episode, I have a different back, like, scenery. That's I'm how it's been for me lately. Yeah. Dude, we just, yeah. we've been bouncing. What's that mm-hmm. one song? Bouncing around, bouncing around, Ooh. bouncing. Yeah, yeah. There's our theme song. There we go. That's how, that's how we've been living life. But, <laughs> yeah, man, it's – uh, dude, I, I – look, as much as I'm disappointed that it, this turned out this way, like you said, we do have Talladega coming up. But, dude, I am – I'm super pumped. Uh, Tyler Reddick getting that third-place finish in this race – um, our fourth place finish was pretty incredible um, watching him go there. And like, you know, I, I knew that like I, I had this just indescribable feeling about those three guys. They were starting lumped up together in like the top of the 20 pack with, with Byron Reddick and Amarola. And they all got into that top 10 and finished that out. So we were, I did get, receive some messages and some love from some of the roto ballers in the garage fam you know, talking about how, you know, they constructed some lineups and they used those guys and, you know, they, they did well. And so that made me feel really good. Um, but yeah, dude, Harvick, the more I thought about Harvick's situation, um, although like, you know, he was flirting inside and outside the top 10, that's fine. But ultimately it come, it came down to him blowing a tire and that could happen to anybody, you know? So it was just one of those things, um, that, that hit. And, you know, you can't do it. We talk about these. We talk about these times. We talk about these races that, you know, you have these big guys. But that's NASCAR. You just never know who it's going to strike. Yeah, I found it uh, ironic that on my tier notes on my rankings, I was like, by no means is – I don't. I said, Denny Hamlin's not a fade. Like, uh, I'm going to have him in some lineups. But he was my least favorite of the spin-up. And um, you made a good point yesterday. You were like, you think you're hedging your lineups perfectly. Like, I definitely had some Denny Hamlin. But didn't have the right combo. Didn't have any Hamlin and Blaney. So that's it. Yeah, Dude, it's weird. That uh, that combo as well, man. It's uh, looking at it right now. I think it was Amarola, Blaney, uh, Hamlin, Reddick, Chase Elliott, Austin Dillon. That was like the big lineup. Um, <clears throat> the curse of Austin Dillon continues for me. Dude, RCR, bro. Yeah, RCR. Like, shout out to Austin Dillon and Whitney Dillon. They just had their first kid. So, that's cool. But, dude, like, yeah, Austin just creeped up out of nowhere towards the end of that race, man. Like, Reddick was just dominant. And it's like, I feel like we're seeing this every race, like, when Reddick's, like, super dominant like that. Like, I think that we have to start paying attention to that. If Reddick is super dominant early on in a race, we have to imagine that, like, with five laps to go, Austin Dillon's going to come out of nowhere and finish inside the top ten. It's just going to happen. Unless we're playing him. Yeah, unless we're playing him. Yeah, but, that's just that's how it is. But I can't believe Reddick's speed, man. How, I mean, how was he up there with those guys? I really don't understand. I know he can drive it. I know we're huge fans. I know we think his, he's just talents there. But it's did just you really like, expect that? Like, did you really expect him to do what he did? 100%. 100%. I'm not bullshitting you. Dude. I thought top five was a ceiling. I thought, like, that's just the best he can do. Mm-mm. I mean, dude, I mean, he got a top five. I mean, that, that was a ceiling. But well, but he got up there, and he was running second and even first for a little bit, right? Yeah. It just showed that, like, you know, he just did not have the speed that – if Blaney and Hamlin didn't come to play, Reddick would have won that race. Um, 
I've been damn near close to it because Elliot was Elliot was really fast as well. But um, dude, absolutely, like dude, Tyler Reddick is like the proof. Like you know the Denny Hamlin Corey LaJoy beef that's been going on. So he's the proof where like when Denny says it's about being a good driver, it's not always about the equipment. It's not always about this. Now, granted, RCR's equipment's a little bit better than Go Fast Racing. I would say that much. Smidge. But yeah, just a smidge. But it just it goes to show that that that's that's what it takes. It takes the skill. It takes the driving. And like I, I talked to you earlier in the week, and I said I've been watching a lot of videos. I've been listening to a lot of Reddick. I've been watching how he ran and and in, in Xfinity, those cars with that you know the high horsepower, low downforce, they can ride that wall. If they ride that wall, dude, I'm talking they're getting like eight second leads on people. And so the only thing that you gotta pray for not to happen is a caution, just like with Noah Gregson for two races in a row over the weekend in Xfinity, he got snubbed the win because of the cautions. But see, in Cup, we we did see some riding the wall, but you don't see it near as much, I feel like, um, in the Cup level just because of the package, the cars. So it really showed even – I was even more impressed with Reddick because of how he did what he did. And um, – but, dude, Miami, everybody says it was a boring race, and I get it. I know it's long and it was grueling and we had the lightning delays. I think if you take the lightning delays out of it, it wouldn't have been that bad, but you have to be able to appreciate just the way that the, the, the they call them slide jobs. And I think that's such like an overrated like turn and cliche and shit. Like just the, the swings, dude, they're just taking swings, getting down, coming back up. Like I think that is exciting as hell to me. Like I love watching that kind of stuff. So don't you feel like slide jobs has just become like, so much it's been overused now because that one video from was it from Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. Yeah, yeah with Kyle Larson and Kyle Bush that was and, awesome I will say that was awesome but then it's yeah. overused now Side job! Yeah. you know what I mean like coming out like yeah it's like it's fun you know it's like you know boogity 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 is a staple so it's like they're basically okay. trying to take slide job and make it a staple and it's like it just doesn't mm -hmm. work they're taking swings you know like that's just uh that's the way I look at it. they're swinging but you call it whatever you want. It's just uh, Tyler Reddick was amazing. Amarola, um, you know, again, like going to those three guys that we, we were right on. Um, Amarola exceeded expectations for me. I will say that. I did not see him finishing. I saw him maybe finishing like ninth, tenth, mm -hmm. may, maybe, maybe 10 to 12. Maybe I was a little bit lower cause just because he's, he's Eric Amarola, you know. Yeah. But he did the it's, damn thing. It's funny that – we nailed him to that point. Cause like if, if you take away dominator points strictly on place differential, we crushed it. Yeah. We crushed place differential, but <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. So. Yeah. It doesn't matter because of that. So, um, you know, we can sit here and talk about some of these other guys and everything. It's just, uh, the, the pitfalls of Kyle Bush is I think the, uh, the big thing we need to talk about. Whereas Kevin with Kevin, I feel like if you wouldn't have lost that tire, we would have seen a top 10 finish for Kevin Harvick. Um, but Kyle Busch, even though we did see a top 10 finish out of him, something is not right. And I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but there is something going on, um, with the team, with him, they, they either are completely off and cannot get that car to do what they needed to do. And I mean, I have my theory on it. It's I, I, I and I, I could be completely off basis. I'm, I may be completely wrong, but I think that that they just – they haven't been able to pinpoint how the weather is, the track conditions, where they're at. Like, there's a lot of changes this season. And then throwing COVID into the mix back in, what, March, you know, that threw some things out for a loop. So, you, you think it's a whole team like Joe Gibbs, whereas, yeah, I will say that Hamlin was the best performer, but that's kind of how it's been. You know, like Truex was on point for Martinsville. And then we saw Hamlin on point, and the other guys were just kind of like there, you know, in and out the whole race of the top ten. But Hamlin just stuck. He just stuck it. So, I don't know what's going on with KB, man. I don't know what it's it been, is. It's been a weird stretch. And oftentimes when these things happen, the one week you decide that you think something's changed um, is, you know, we'll be off of him and then he'll, he'll crush. But I do think there's more to this story than – then we're getting, like you said, it just seems like he's not that dominant. Like, why haven't we seen him? It, 
I almost feel like we're about to see an explosion between him and Cruci for him and somebody. Like, there's got to be something because he's he can't be happy right now. So yeah, dude, he's already got he's already got like the entire uh, his truck team like is already like just in an uproar because of how they've been. Uh, even though he did win the truck race at Miami over this weekend, I remember like seeing how mad he was when he lost that bet or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, to Chase Elliott the bounty. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know. Something's gonna have to give eventually. But you said it best last night when we were talking. You know, is is he just looked really slow? And I think that's when I came back and I was like, he kind of looked slow last season too. It's like, I don't know what it is, dude. It's like, he's supposed to be like this great driver, but like, it does seem like everyone else just leaves his ass. Like, you know what I mean? In the beginning. And he just, he, his skill is what gets him where he is. So if that's his skill working right now, his car must be, um, uh, Brennan Poole status, uh, JJ Yeely status. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm lost, man. <laughs> I'm lost on this guy. I can't believe he finished sixth, though. It's kind of surprising. I mean, he did. He bounced. He bounced back in. I just, you just, man, like that was our guy. That was our Denny Hamlin. You know what I mean? It was two weeks like, in a row. Yeah, or two yeah. races in a row, right? So two races in a row. We we I bounced back on him, dude. We put it down. I mean, like I'm glad he got a top ten. That's cool. Could have been better, but we just needed them dominator the points. Yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest, like, mistake – I'm glad that I didn't play a shitload of this guy, but I think that, like, the biggest letdown of this race was probably Joey Logano. Dude. Yeah, he's burned us, too. I mean, that's two weeks in a row. He has been – I don't think he's done well two weeks straight. I'd have to have a refresher in the last race, but I feel like he's he was, been he – was, he, was, he was okay at Martinsville, man. He, he, had, he had a lot of laps led, and then he just kind of, like, you know, went in and out. He okay. wasn't the worst. I remember that. He had some laps yeah. led. But, but before, uh, before Martinsville, yeah, it was a little rough for, for Joseph. But, dude, there's all kinds of shit that's stirring now because Chase Elliott finished second in this race, had a great car. Um, and, and he showed a lot of promise last night, too. Like, Logano got in his way. They've already got the beef started up now where he was like, I think the Hooters girl had asked him a question, like, if somebody called, would you pick up the – who would you not answer? He's like, probably Joey Logano. I don't want to hear his voice. He was like, it's kind of annoying. Like, just saying stuff like that, like on his – Just real uh, casually? Yeah, yeah, just nonchalant. And um, yeah, that's, that's starting. But I think we've realized, dude, that, like, Joey, Joey, I don't think he, I don't think he's gonna do anything. I don't think he's got it in him to do anything. He had the ability to change the race last night, and this might be a little controversial, but um, I was like, "Go ahead and turn chase." That was your opportunity to get in there with like seven, eight laps. I don't know exactly how many laps were left, but Chase was passing on the to make, putting the lap down, and Logano didn't even try. Maybe he's saving his cards, but. I doubt it at this point. I don't think he's saving his cards because he was in a prime opportunity to strike. And not only that, but he had Hamlin there. See, where you were more – where you were more like get chased, I was more like, hey, there's there's Denny. Remember when he slapped you? Remember <laughs> yeah, when he slapped you at Martinsville? Yeah. I was like, yeah, like, get him out of here. Like, go. Mm-hmm. Like, I needed Denny to go last night. And, like, it's not every race. Like, there's races I have Denny, and, and I want him to do well. But, like, this is the life of, you know, of DFS players. So <laughs> it is. And yeah. how crazy is it that, okay, every time that I feel like we're winning big or I'm winning big, I don't know about you personally, but a caution can ruin something for me so quickly. And then oh, the God. race that we needed it the most, like, I mean, Blaney almost cut a tire at one point. I don't know how he didn't. Like, yeah. How did he not do that? Like, yeah. You know. we, we thought it was about to happen too. So this is a quick scoop for the garage fam. Uh, Drew and I, Got to hang out with uh, Randy at Randy Uncle the Plumber's Randy. house. Uncle Randy. Yeah, it's Uncle Randy now officially. Uh, we, I, I will say, the race may have not been the best for us, but the day was fun. The day was good. We got to you know, get around. We got to sit around and watch the, the race on the, on the TV and get to hear Randy, oh, shitting it up and around the house and just doing his thing or whatever and like just getting in the race. And isn't it hilarious how – me and you will have our picks and guys, and he's completely on the opposite side sometimes, like with yeah. some of these guys that he's likes. And that just shows you, like, from the, the pure the fan standpoint of it, too, and, like, him just slowly starting to get into everything that we're doing now. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty fun to watch. And, and, you know, that was one thing that I can't say that was good about it, um, even though all the other stuff happened. But 
I like how he made me get on the um, the microphone to introduce myself. Like I walked into this place, <laughs> there's a bunch of people there, and he goes, "Just go ahead and grab that mic." And I introduced myself to like everyone there. Thought that was funny. It's my first thing I did. Yeah. Hi, I'm Drew. Yeah. Hi, hi I'm Drew. Hi, me. Everyone just like kind of looks up like it's a normal thing. That was the funniest part. Like, oh, this is normal. Somebody walks in and announces their name on the on the microphone. Yeah, we just have PA systems set up everywhere we go. <laughs> <laughs> How sad is it that I'm still drinking this two liter and that I'm actually enjoying it? <laughs> I just can't believe it. You found that. I didn't know that was being sold still, honestly. Yeah. It's like, it did. It's, it's like you found a surge can from 1998. Oh my God. Drip drop might be mad at you for having that. I don't know. I'm sorry, drip drop. I love you. It's just, we're, we're, we're going to get through this. Um, our boy, Michael McDowell finishing 15th. Could have been better. Continues <laughs> to do it though. That's a huge, I mean, that's yeah. 15 place differential spots. That's huge, man. For yeah. $5,100. I'll take it. I'll take it. He Aaron. wasn't the problem. So no, but, uh, you're, you're just about right. You're, you're either constantly creating conflict for Eric Jones every week in your mind. And then it's just relaying to the track or like, he's just not good either because like every time we play Eric Jones, you're like, yep, he's going to screw us. Yep. He's going to hit us. <laughs> I'm just like, no, like, don't say that. And then he does it. I'm the worst. I'm the worst at jinxing us because I tell people like I preach to have a short term memory and uh, to forget about the bad plays and just keep playing them next week if they're a good play. And yet uh, you've heard me like literally say I'm done playing him and then I'll play him next week. So I go that's through a, a phase. I'm that's recovering. Everything. I'm recovering for the next three days and then I'll be back to my usual self. You're recovering Jonesaholic. Yes, hundred percent. Dude, I was Jones in for him. I was Jones in for Jones this week, man. Well, the, what rough. lap was that that he went out like lap? seven laps left. oh dude he like he pitted with like seven laps to go like it was like purposely just being like yeah fuck it we're right. out like and didn't i say he was like the most likely person like like he looks like he would like shit his pants on the reg like oh yeah yeah he's just got that face he's just got that he's got that that butter face dude he's just like he's just like well here comes where's your lineup at ah! you know what i mean just like throw it down to him <laughs> and make sure he shits all on it but yeah, man, I don't know. It was know. the definite nail in the coffin for me. I was like, this day can't get any worse, and then it got worse. Yeah, Harvick happened, then that yeah. happened. I don't know. But um, for everybody that sweated it out with us, um, you know, fear not. It will be better. Mm -hmm. It won't be this way forever. But I will say this much. You know, if, as, as we keep going with Miami now, you know, we kind of know what to expect and what not to expect. This is a very fast track drivers can get away it's all about long run um and the restarts it, it's just like that's the one thing that's beautiful about it is you start to understand like that long run short run speed and you know who has what so you know when them restarts happen um i think that this is like uh, a really good race to where you can just i don't know like it's it, it was really pleasing to the eye to like watch and understand and really like get close to that that feeling of like how this all works. Cause you said it yourself, you know, you barely watched Homestead races because typically it's during football season. So we're yeah. in the thick of the NFL and the championship is out. Uh, I think that my first Homestead that I watched in a long time was last year when Kyle won. And I haven't watched a lot of Homestead racing. So it was, uh, it, it's, it's interesting. Like I said, just kind of like watching at that track, seeing how things go, but out of, uh, I mean, overall, like, what would you – if you – from a fan standpoint, if you had to grade that race, where would you put that at? So, I'm going to put my biases aside because I know I had a bad fantasy day and my heater is officially over because I had a great um, start. Post-coronavirus, post, post -coronavirus, I was on fire. So, I'm going to put all that aside and I'm going to tell you that I think it was a C to a D the past two races, honestly. And NASCAR had so much momentum with how entertaining a lot of these races are. But in my opinion, if you look at the past two, the Xfinity race has been way more entertaining for both of them, way more entertaining. And I just, I don't think if I was somebody not playing fantasy and not interested in the sport, you turned that on yesterday and it wasn't entertaining. It was not good. The drama wasn't there. There was very little passing uh, going on. And I know how you brought up the point that you were fascinated by some of the, you know, running the high line and some of the slide jobs and, and all that stuff. But I just don't think that moves the needle for a lot of fans. So. Right. They, yeah. Not, not everybody is, 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 gets as geeked out about shit like that as I do. 
But mm-hmm. I will say this in, in a lot of people's defense, and I'm, I'm with everybody, the majority of fans I'm with on this. The Cup Series needs to go back to high horsepower, low downforce. That is the reason why you're yeah. seeing these races in the Xfinity Series so much like more entertaining than the Cup Series lately. It's just because with this low horsepower, high downforce, that's what you get. So hopefully we'll see NASCAR really take a, a look into this and say, okay, maybe we do need to change the things up. And we may not see the change until the new package, you know, to the Gen 7 car comes. Um, yeah. But, you know, if we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. And um, I hope to God that something gives because we need that because that's, that's the excitement levels that we need for Cup Series. In Xfinity, it's great too, but why not just do it in all of them? Um, I don't see what the problem would be with that, but, yeah, overall, I would probably say this race is like a C plus B minus for me, just because, like I said, I'm just a geek about this shit. But yeah. um, Bubba Wallace finishing 13th, that's another impressive deal. Um, he he looks like he's continuously, like, at these types of tracks, like, I know Martinsville, he's really good at. And, like, when you get into these intermediates, it seems like he's kind of picking up momentum, getting a little, a little, little, little pedal to the metal action going on. So it's good to see him trying to bounce back up. And then uh, I think another one, too, I think the big debate we had was, like, over, like, Cole Custer and Ryan Priest because those were, like, two guys we didn't, like, really write about. I didn't write about them. And that, those were kind of the guys I was hung up on as to who would be, like, that final okay, final piece. Come away. Oh. I cannot. Come away. Sandwich. But, sandwich yeah, break. Got an egg sandwich. Say hey to Lauren. Hey. Hey. How are you? It's, I'm doing hear. very well. She can't hear. I'm doing hey, very Lauren, well. Who's your favorite NASCAR driver? She said. Yeah, who is it? Uh, she doesn't even know a guy's I name. I don't even know if I can name one right now. Tell her. Tell her. Tell her. So Chris right Buescher. Tell her. Chris, Chris Buescher fan. All right. Chef, girl, chef Girl Ardeen. We love her. <laughs> your Chef Girl Ardeen. <laughs> we love She's her. She's laughing. I'm so embarrassed. Uh, I didn't know one guy. <laughs> She's embarrassed. We're, it's okay. She, we're gonna make sure you you need to go tell Chef Girl about this man, your, your love of life, Chef Girl Ardeen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I, know, I did. She's gonna hate it, and she's gonna love it. It's okay. Here's my meal. Make it. Oh, we got a meal. A little See? egg sandwich. Ooh. Yeah. She did. She did you good, man. She, she did, did you good. Yep. Gonna go right back to the to the baby phoning bag now. There you go. This is now the third consecutive thing we've done, either either a Roto Baller video or a podcast episode that I've had food at some point during it. We just be snacking. Yeah. We just snack, snacking out, snack attack. At, and to be honest, in my defense, I've had to eat during this segment every time. Yeah. The grind's been so serious for me right, I mean, right now between fantasy sports and the day job that I've, uh, I've been having to do this just to combine some things. Absolutely. Like, dude, I'm not going to lie, the day pods – like the garage fame, if you haven't realized, like we're we're doing day pods, we're doing daytime podcasts, lunch break pods, whatever we got to do. Yeah, it's, this is that life. I will say it's a little bit bittersweet about the Wednesday thing, though. Um, even though we were like just busting balls, you know, going from like literally getting done with the race and be like, okay, moving next, moving on, like, and it just didn't. Gotta stop. get the preview video out. Gotta get the preview video out. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like so. It's going to be good to kind of like take a little step back, focus on some other things, get some uh, some other things caught up that need to be caught up. So that'll be cool. And um, but but other than that, yeah, going back to just Sunday racing, it couldn't have started better. There's no better combination than Talladega and Father's Day. So if we're moving away from Miami, leaving Miami in the past, that's where it belongs. Go buy your Father's Day gifts. Good reminder. Yeah. Go to uh, the Garage Guys Fancy Sports Teespring shop and go and find Pop a good old shirt. If he's a Brad Keselowski fan, get him a Slam Brad K shirt. If, you, if, if he's a racing fan, get him a Garage Guys racing shirt. Um, we got all kinds of, of, of weird and wacky and wild designs and things on there, so go check that out for sure. Get more Pop to some too. goods. Oh, yes, plenty more. Plenty more. Don't, don't fret. The best is yet to come. But Dega, so this is what we got to look forward to, man. Obviously, we all know there's a strategy to Dega, the DFS, the way you play, things you do. Mm -hmm. Um, That's no secret, shared to a lot of people, and it's just about staying the course, sticking it out, making it happen, and that's how these things roll. Um, 
but we do have something that is very notable uh, to discuss for Dega coming up into this week, and that's the fact that there is a brand new super speedway package that is going to be ran. And they have – NASCAR has decided to do no practice. I haven't really got to ask your opinion. Are you for or against this move? And is this going to make you do anything different when you're looking at your rankings this week? You cut out there. Can you repeat that question for me? Sorry. I sure can. I sure can. I'll repeat it for everyone here. My question is, is that since NASCAR has now ruled that there will be no practice for this new super speedway package that we have not seen yet, how is this going to affect the way you do your rankings? And will it change much of anything variating off of the typical strategy that most of us DFS players use at super speedways like Daytona and Talladega? Without practice, I think – I'm better suited and you're better suited to stick with the strategy. As long as we think uh, wrecks will still happen and they always come around. They always happen at Talladega. I've had friends that don't buy into the strategy and they're, or they do buy into the strategy of leaving salary on the table and playing all these guys in the back. And they'll be cussing me. They'll be cussing me out uh, 15 laps left. And then all of a sudden we got a wreck and then a restart and a wreck restart wreck and next thing you know half the field's gone and then they're we go from you know cussing me out to saying that i'm a genius yeah you're amazing so, and it happens. yeah exactly <laughs> it happens like the snap of a finger and you know that that's the thing about it man it's just like it's one of those it's definitely one of those races where are you gonna change your strategy i mean do you think this is i mean if you can prove to me basically that the incidents will not happen as frequently because of the change that i'm in but without practice i think we're forced to, to stick to the strategy at the end of the day, it's a new aero package, okay? That's, that's how much we know. There's a couple other things with it. I'm trying to look and see if I can find anything else a little bit more in depth on it. But I've, been, I've just been hearing people talk about it. Look, we've seen a lot of races where they've unveiled new packages and done new things. And for the most part, everything turned out semi-normal. There may have been like one guy that was like a little bit different than normal. But, like, it wasn't enough to, like, really, like, like blow something out of the water. You know what I mean? Typically, everybody's always been on point. But, dude, when you take something to a super speedway, all this shows me is that, okay, for one, we know this much. They want to unveil something new. There may be some slight differences in, like, you know, short run, long run, whatever. You may see some differences there. But the overall product of Daytona and Talladega is a lot of people – a lot of booze, wrecks, action. It's it's a fan experience race. Like it's like it's for all the oohs and ahs, you know. And just to your point, just like you said, you're still gonna get all that. You're still gonna see all of that. So yeah, I'm sticking to everything we've always done because this is this would be the time where the people that are not in as deep or that play as much would be like, oh, it's something new. So. Maybe we don't need to do what everyone's been doing. If they're reading something that says this is how it's been done for years, people, you know, some people may be like, oh, well, I don't, I don't trust that. I'm going to do against everything else. And then that's, that's how we prevail. So I, yeah, it's uh, still not, a, it's still like, I know probably some content providers know the strategy and provide the strategy, but I can tell you for with certainty that it's still not popular. It's still not popular because people don't want to leave salary on the table. So it's, if you're with us, I can tell you this, it's either going to be a make or break race. And every time it's a make, it's become one of my most profitable tracks. Um, it is my most profitable track ever. So couldn't I be think, better timing after this disaster we had last race. So yeah. Oh, shout out to the clock. Got, can we hear it? Barely. Oh, dude. Shout out to the clock. Shout out to the clock. I need to get the condenser mic back out. I'm, I'm so used to the, uh, to the headset nowadays, man. It's just so convenient. You just get where you're going, plug it in, just ready to go. I'm going to get it back out one of these days, though. That way we can get the clock in its full essence. I love the clock. Um, but, yeah, I know I'm pumped, man. Talladega was a good race for me last year. Um, I definitely – I had – I got really lucky. I had one of those um, just awesome lineups because it only takes one lineup. 
That's what I'm saying. You build multiple ones. I had one with like Blaney and, and a couple other guys, but like having Blaney in it was, was huge because he got the win. And um, so, yeah, it was, um, it was a good race. I know you had a good one as well. And we're going to look to continue that trend. Dega is one of our favorite races. It's a race that we go to when we're allowed, which we're not this time around. Um, I just got a text message from somebody a little bit ago. I won't name any names. He's like, guess who's going to Dega? I'm just like, fuck you, bro. So it's what? just like, yeah. So it's a person that lives not far from the track. I haven't even oh, got so to say fuck you to him yet, but I will as soon as we're done. So they're allowed to go if they had tickets beforehand and they live in the state, right? That's you got to live, you got to live within 15, well, 150 mile radius in the state of Alabama. Um, and you had to already either have a campsite or buy tickets. So yeah, that's what sucks about it. So this guy I know that lives in like, like maybe like in 30 minutes from the track, like, yeah, he's go, he's getting to go. So as, go as much as I would love to go, I'm going to be the, the optimistic one here. As much as I would love to go, it would kind of suck to be our first Talladega of me, you and Randy there and it not to have all the fan interaction. Not to have the fans. Yeah. Yeah. See, so. I'm I'm talking from a sheer standpoint of just being in the pit and oh, not yeah. doing anything else. Like right. just being able to, to like smell the burnt rubber and just like have conversations with guys in the pit boxes and talk to these drivers and really pick their brains. Like that that's the best part. And then of course Every other day that's not race day, the best part is being with the fans and interacting and just, like, getting to know people and, you know, just just having a really good time. So, hopefully, come the end of the year, when we go back to Talladega, we'll have all the fans there and we can be there to celebrate that with. Because I'm just ready to get to a race. The first race where it's all systems go, bet your ass, I'm pretty sure we'll be there. Um, if everything can line up cor correctly for us so no drip drops eager to get us there so oh yeah big time and i'm ready to get the drip drop to the track i'm ready to go i'm ready like literally i'm pretty sure whatever race we end up going to i'm gonna like go down pit road to like every pit stall and i'm just gonna be like drink this it's not anthrax i promise like just like <laughs> handing it out it's like what is this you can have it, like pre-mixed form and just hand it to them say drink it yeah, <laughs> we could do that 100%. Just, like, give them all these bottles. I've thought about that as well. There's all kinds of different options we could do. But, um, but yeah, we're going to have a lot more to talk about uh, on Talladega as the week continues. So, uh, um, well, we should be knowing uh, starting position sometimes towards the end of the week. You guys can be on the lookout for the Rotoballer NASCAR DFS preview show where Drew and I will be discussing, uh, you know, five guys that we like early on. You know, Drew gets his rankings done over the weekend. I get my full picks article done over the weekend. And um, it's only Monday. We have no Wednesday racing, so we do have a little bit of a gap. So um, we got a little bit of extra time to take to really make sure that we get things right. I'm, uh, I'm going to – I've already sweated out. Uh, all the bad energy is gone. I've already ate three Reese's Cups and uh, half a bag of Baby Funyuns and drank uh, some Sierra Mist. So I feel like it washed away the bad juju. And uh, we're going to march forward into this week. We're going to get ready to dominate Dega, one of, uh, one of Drew's best races um, in his DFS career. So that's another thing you guys need to keep in mind. There I go being hype boy again. But that's My how I man. do it. The hype man. I do, man. Your, your, work, your work is appreciated. That's what matters. You identified the work before most. You identified the work at Talladega. Yeah, I seen it. Which With is fine. too. Yeah. I seen to it my own too. So it's there. Um, the passion's there. We got we got it all. The garage guys got it all. And we're bringing it all at Roto Baller. So you guys know to go over there. Use promo code uh, garage. Get 10% off of your subscription. Um, also, you're going to get an optimizer. You're going to get premium chat. We got, we got a little bit of everything to, to help you get into it. And there's been so many people reaching out to me. I, look, I, guys, before I even eat that Reese's, I'm not even going to eat the Reese's. I'm going to tell you this before we go. I cannot be happier to see so many people getting involved with this sport. Regardless of why you came, you're here. And there are so many amazing changes happening. Alvin Kamara was just in Miami randomly up in the stands by himself watching a race decked out in Bubba Wallace gear. That's incredible. I want to see more NFL players at NFL races. I want to see NBA players. You know, I want to see baseball players. 
I want to see musicians. I want to see people get that love back for racing again because there's so much amazing stuff coming from NASCAR and it's going to continue on. I, I've never been more proud to be in the NASCAR industry, like as, you know, just a, a media company, an outlet. Um, you know, the, the, the betting fantasy sports industry for, you know, being with NASCAR being our core, um, that it, it's a, it's an amazing feeling. It's a beautiful thing. And, um, and it's just going to continue to get even, even better. And I know you're excited about it too, man. Yeah, it's been yeah. great. Yeah. It's like, if there's one thing good that can come from the coronavirus thing, I hate to act positive about it, but, um, it's really put the spotlight on NASCAR a little bit and well-deserved. So appreciate yeah. that and it's been fun doing it it's been a, a wild ride i told somebody the other day maybe it was you chase i was like as busy as i've been i'd rather be i wouldn't rather be doing anything else as crazy as these wednesday sunday races like i'm so tired but i'm so happy to be doing it all and um it's it's been a good good ride we appreciate all the feedback and then people have been hitting your dms pretty hard so yeah dude and that's incredible guys keep that coming man it's, it's nothing but love all the people that message me that are, you know, making picks and, and betting on these drivers and stuff. And um, it's like, I'm developing little mini friendships and, you know, just uh, getting acquainted with everybody that follows, you know, my content, Drew's content, like all of our content at Rotoballer. I love that. I want that connection with, uh, with everybody, you know, cause like at the end of the day, like me and you both have, have discussed, I want, I want to know that we got a, we got the crew, the fam, you know, the garage fam, the roto ballers. I, I want y'all there because we're playing the same plays you're playing. We're sweating it, you know, we're feeling it. And, and there's nothing better to me than that. Just like having a group, you got that camaraderie, you know, so um, couldn't be happier and more excited for that. So um, always a beautiful thing. Thank you guys for that. Definitely continue that. Be sure you're um, get it, getting over to Apple podcast. Make be sure to write us a review. If you've been listening to us for a while, reviews help us so much. Um, Take the time to write a sentence, you know, give us however many stars you think we're worth. Um, doing that just goes such a long way. And from the bottom of my heart, I just appreciate it so much. And thank you guys for y'all to take the time to do those things. Um, telling friends about us and, and just continuing to help us grow. Uh, we wouldn't be able to, to do that without you guys. So huge thanks on that front. Chef boy, you got any last words? Well said. Well said. Well said. Looking forward to day of the week. It's bounce back season for me. It's bounce back, baby. We're coming back strong. Coming back strong. Sports. Party. Repent. <laughs> you wild. <laughs> it's the garage, guys. 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 It's the garage 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 guys. It's it's it's. It's the garage guys. It's it's the garage guys.